Welcome to Lemmis.com. In this video, we will show you how to upgrade a wireless LAN controller and pre-download the new image to an access point. Although we will be working on a virtual wireless LAN controller in this lab, the procedures are the same for any other conventional controllers and this includes 2500 series, 5508, and the Wizen. For lab topology, we have a virtual wireless LAN controller running software version 7.3 on VLAN 32 with the IP of .104. And on the same VLAN, we have a Windows 2008 that we're going to be using for our FTP server to download the code at the IP of .40. Then for our test AP, we have it on VLAN 64 and it will be getting DSCP. And the goal of this lab is to upgrade our controller from the version 7.3 to version 7.5. So as the prerequisite at this point, you should have downloaded the software image from Cisco.com of the version that you're going to be upgrading to and place that under the FTP directory. So in our case here, it's just the desktop of our Windows 2008 machine. You can see right here, we have an image for our 7.5 version. And I'm also gonna bring up the console to the AP as well. So that way we can see what's going on in the AP as we push out the new image to it. So here the console to the AP with our LM AP1. So now let's take a quick look as far as what we have currently. So here, is the web interface to our wireless LAN controller. As you can see, we're currently running the software version 7.3.101, and we're gonna take that up to version 7.5. So if you go under commands and config boot, obviously right now the primary image is still 7.3, it's marked as default, as well as being an active image. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is to download the new image file to the controller. So here we go under the download file, for file type, by default, is code, so we're going to leave that alone. For the transfer mode, you have the option of using whether it's TFTP or FTP. So in our lab here, we said we're going to use FTP. And now we need to fill out the server details as well as the file names and file path. Okay, so start off with the IP address of our FTP server, which is the server that we currently RTP into. And we said the IP is 172.16.32.40. For the path, we have already set our FTP server root to be on our desktop. So that will be just a forward slash. For file name, let me just copy what we have in the background here. Make sure it's got the file extension .aes. And for the locked on name, we have a user and password of Cisco Cisco. So before I hit download, let me bring up the FTP interface so we can see right there the file is currently being transferred you can see the speed and the progress so it's happening fairly quickly so just going to give it a couple seconds for the download to complete okay so the image itself has been successfully downloaded now we're just going to let the controller kind of go through the upgrade process and kind of do its thing and while that's happening let me pause the video and i'll come right back when it's completed okay so the controller just came back and said FTP file transfer is successful and it's asking us to reboot the controller to complete the upgrade process. If you go ahead and do that at this point, when the controller comes back with a new image, the AP or ever still does not have the new image. So it's gonna go through the download process and depends on the where the location of the AP is. The process might take longer, especially if it goes across the WAN and for the whole duration of the download process, you're gonna have pretty much wireless network being down. So it's, it's our best interest to minimize that process. And the way to do that is to pre-download the image to the AP before we actually reboot the controller. And this is what it says right here, optionally, pre-download the image to APs. Okay, so but first thing first, let's double check. Under the config boot, you can see before we have 7.3 as our primary image, it now has become 7.5.102. And now it's marked as default. That means the next time it reloads, the controller is going to use that image. Okay, so let's go ahead and save the config just in case you might have um, any kind of config change before we go ahead and reboot. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to push out the new software 7.5 to our access point. So that way, when the controller comes back with a new image, the AP already has that image store as a backup image and it can immediately switch and start using the image and, not, and we do not have to wait for the image download to occur. Before we do that, let's take a look at where we are with the APs. Okay, so right now, if you scroll to the right here on our list of APs, the primary software version is 7.3.101. It also has the backup software, which is 
but we're not going to use those since we upgraded in 7.5. And in order to upgrade or pre-download the new image to all of your APs, you can go under the global configuration on the menu on the left here, and then scroll down. Kind of move this to the right a little bit so you can see the whole screen. There you go. Scroll down, and under the section of AP image pre-download, you have the option of downloading of pushing out the primary image of the controller or the backup image of the controller to the APs. Since we just saw that our primary image is now marked as 7.5, we're going to go and hit download primary. And then it's asking you to confirm if you want to pre-download the primary image to all of the APs. So I said OK. And this time let's jump back to our list of APs right here since we only have one. And you can see here now with the download status is pre-downloading. Okay, we can also choose uh, the AP, and we'll pretty much see the same thing right here. Pre-download status is pre-downloading, and the pre-download version is 7.5.1 or 2. Okay, so right now we're just going to have to give it a couple seconds here for the pre-download to complete. And also, if you look at our console to the AP in the background here, you see there's some activity. It said image 7.5.102. It's not found in, in Flash, and this is when the controller is trying to push out the image. It's just check that the image hasn't really uh, already exists locally. So it starts the pre-downloading process, and this is some of the image information with the software version, the exact image name for the controller. The image family is 1130, which is the access point model, and actually found out that there's not enough free space for the download so it has to delete some of the existing image just to get more space and we're still waiting for the download to complete and now it looks like I just finished deleting or freeing up some space and now it's going through the extraction of the image let's just delete the current backup version which we just saw was 7.4 image and now it said the new software or backup software image has been installed Okay, so at this point, you can try to go back and click on the AP one more time. You can see the status have uh, become complete. Again, with the pre-download version of 7.5. And you can see here the backup software version has also changed uh, 7.5.102 as opposed to 7.4 that we, we saw earlier. That's how you would initiate a pre-download for all of the APs, but for some reason, if you want to do just the individual AP, you can select the AP, and under the Advanced tab, you have a similar section, which is an AP image download with exactly the same options. So this is how you would do a pre-download for just a certain APs. Okay, so now our AP already has the correct image ready to go. So as soon as we reboot the controller, the AP will detect that the controller image has become 7.5. It will do an image swaps and the backup image will become the primary, as you will see in the second here. So what we can do now is to go ahead and reboot the controller. So either you can schedule a reboot if you have a certain maintenance window that you have to stick to. For example, in the middle of the night, you can schedule a controller reboot. And that way, hopefully when you come back in the morning, everything should be completed by then. Okay, so but for us, we're just going to force reboot right now. So under reboot, we'll click reboot. Click OK. While the control is going down, let me bring up a command prompt and try to ping so we know when the controller comes back. Just 32.104. And it looks like it went down already. Okay, so while the control is rebooting, I'm just going to pause the video one more time and I'll be right back. Okay, so it looks like we got our ping back on our controller and also have a lock-in prompt. So let me try to lock into the controller quickly and I'm just trying to catch the AP right here. So it lost the connection to the controller, obviously, since it went, the controller went through a reboot. But as soon as it can detect the controller, it's trying to come in with the software version 7.3, which is the old software version. Obviously, at that point, the AP has no idea that the controller has gone through the upgrade. And... Right there, it looks like the AP is still coming up. And it looks like it's might have tried to switch to a new image already. So let's go through this output real quick. So we have, maybe we'll let it uh, settle down a little bit. And then we'll go through the output and see what actually happened. Okay, so the AP has now disappeared from the list. And it looks like it's coming back up again.
Actually, let's wait for that to, or for the AP to fully come up, and then we'll go through the log. Okay, so it looks like the AP is fully up. And again, if you scroll to the right, you can see the primary software version has now become 7.5.102. And what used to be a primary version has been moved to the backup software version, which is 7.3.101. Okay, so the AP is now up with the new image. So let's scroll back on the AP console and review the output. Okay, so right here with the retransmission count exceeded, and this is when we re rebooted the controller and the AP lost connectivity to the controller. And now as soon as it detects the controller, it's trying to build the tunnel to 32.104, sending join requests to the controller. And then this is when it found out that the controller image has changed from 7.3 to 7.5. And this is why we have an output here as far as reload requested by Cat Web client. And the reload reason is the required image found in the backup. And this is referring to the version 7.5. So the controller informed the APs that the new software version is 7.5. The AP found the exact same software version in the backup image. So it went through a reboot automatically. And this is where if we didn't do the pre-download the image, the AP would not be able to find the required image locally and it had to go through the image download. Okay, so the AP went through a reboot, came back with the new software image, and it came right back trying to join the controller. It got DSCP IPs right here, 64.35. Since we didn't have the DNS record configured for those name of the controller, but we used the DSCP option for the AP discovery. So it found the controller IP from option 43, to IP 32.104, and this is where it came back and registered with the controller. Okay, so right here, AP has drawn controller LM-WLC1. Okay, so at this point, the upgrade is pretty much complete. And as you can see that the, it only took the AP only maybe a minute or two to realize that it needs to switch to the new image and then went through the reboot and came back. So if you were to have a lot of APs, they were all simultaneous reboot and came back together in a short period of time as compared to if they all have to download the image, especially if you have a couple hundred APs and they're all trying to come in and download the image all at once, that will obviously extend the downtime of your wireless network. The last thing I want to mention is if you happen to have a wise LAN controller, an HA pair, and by HA I mean that the secondary box or the second box has the HA license installed and not so much of if you run like a two separate controllers in active active and trying to load balance the APs and one will access the backup to one another. So in an HA pair, the secondary of the standbys is actually doesn't do anything. It's just being a hot standby and only take over when the primary box fail. So when you're trying to do the upgrade in that environment, you actually only initiate the upgrades from the active controller. And that's because either the primary or secondary can be active at the time. And as soon as the image is uploaded to the active box, it will get replicated automatically to the standby. So the whole process happens together as one single upgrade. And when the controller goes through the reboot, it actually take down both boxes. So just keep in mind that in that environment, you can really avoid the downtime while both of your controllers and the APs are rebooted. Okay, so that wraps up our video on wireless LAN controller software upgrade. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmints.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.